Welcome to Chapter 6, Lesson 1 about weather. What makes up weather? Weather changes all the time. Measuring weather helps people predict weather accurately. Parts of weather. What will the weather be like this weekend? Will it be sunny or rainy? Weather is what the air is like outside. It includes the kinds of clouds in the sky and the kind and amount of water in the air. It also includes the temperature of the air and how the wind is blowing. Clouds are made of water droplets in the air. Different kinds of clouds form in different weather. Because of this, clouds can help predict what will happen to the weather. Some kind of kinds of clouds form in sunny weather. Others form in rainy or stormy weather. Look at clouds on a warm, bright day. The clouds are white and fluffy. On a stormy day, clouds are dark. Then here's some pictures of clouds. These cumulus clouds look like cotton balls, but like balls of cotton. You see these on sunny days. These are very high, thin cirrus clouds. They are made of tiny ice crystals. You see these clouds on sunny days, too. And here's the checkpoint question that we'll be talking about. How do clouds look on stormy days? Oh, here's a hint on page 174. Measuring weather. How do you describe the weather? You might say it's too hot, but someone else might not agree. That person might like this weather. Words like hot mean different things to different people. The word hot is an opinion, but 34 degrees Celsius, which is 93 degrees Fahrenheit, means just one thing. It is a fact that describes the temperature. Many tools help scientists measure and describe weather. They also help describe the atmosphere. The atmosphere is the blanket of air that surrounds Earth. This air is made up of gases that have no color, taste, or odor. The atmosphere has different parts, or layers. Each layer is a different temperature. Each has different amounts of gases. The atmosphere has weight so it presses down with a certain force. This force is called air pressure. Weather reports often describe air pressure. When the air presses down a lot, the air pressure is high. When it presses less, the air pressure is low. And here are some of the layers of the atmosphere. At the top, we have the topest layer. This is where the space shuttle circles the Earth. And then as you go down, we have this is where our atmosphere meets outer space. And then have you ever seen a shooting star? This is where pieces of rock from outer space burn up. And then we have where many jet airplanes fly here above the weather. And then weather happens in this part of the atmosphere, the lowest part. And then here's the plane that goes up higher. And then the ground. Clues help predict changes. Changes in air pressure are useful clues. They suggest that other weather changes are on the way. Low air pressure often means that weather will be cloudy or rainy. High air pressure often means skies will be clear. Scientists can measure air pressure with a tool called a barometer. Wind speed and direction are useful clues. A tool called an anemometer measures wind speed. A wind vane records the direction of the wind. Scientists use tools such as hydrometers to measure how much water vapor is in the air. This amount of the amount of water vapor in the air is called humidity. The humidity is low when air is dry. The humidity is high when air has more water in it. Rain gauges also measure water. 
They show how much rain has fallen. Weather tools or instruments help scientists learn more about weather. They also help scientists predict what the weather will be like. So checkpoint question, what do tools or how do tools help scientists describe the weather? Ooh, look over here. We have a barometer, picture of a barometer here. This tool measures air pressure, the force the air pushes down on us. Here's an anemometer, and this tool measures wind speed. And a weather vane, this tool measures the direction of the wind. And down here we have a hydrometer. This tool measures how much water is in the air, so it measures the humidity. And then we have a rain gauge. This tool measures how much rain has fallen. Weather map. Weather tools gather weather data. Scientists show this data on weather maps. Weather maps show data for a large area. They show temperatures and storms. Some maps give information about areas of high and low air pressure. Look at the weather map below. It shows the United States. The numbers show the temperatures in different cities. The small pictures show what the weather is like. You can probably guess what some pictures mean. The key shows the meaning of all the pictures. And here it is. So here's the weather map. And it uses pictures to interpret data that weather tools have gathered. How can you learn or what can you learn from this weather map? Well, here the H stands for um, high pressure and L for low pressure. Here we have the temperatures and clouds for cloudy areas and sun for sunny areas. And over here it has the key for what all those symbols mean. It even snow and rain. Weather satellites gather weather data from all over the world. These satellites move high above the Earth. They can take pictures of large areas of the planet. They send these pictures and data back to scientists on Earth. Information from satellites is very useful to scientists. For example, they can see storm clouds form and can tell the direction that the storms are coming or moving. Pollution alerts. Weather news may include smog and ozone pollution alerts. In many cities, cars and trucks help cause these alerts. The gases that leave their engines are called exhaust. On some days, a lot of exhaust stays in the air. The sun's rays can turn that air into smog and ozone. On days with little wind, the smog and ozone do not move away. Smog and ground level ozone can be harmful to health. They can make people cough. Some people might not be able to breathe easily. During air pollution alerts, some people must stay inside. And so here's a little bit about another weather map. We have weather satellites like this one gather weather data. Maps from the satellite data can show the direction storm clouds are moving. The sun's rays strike the exhaust from gasoline burned in cars and trucks. This causes smogs. And here's the question we'll be talking about. What can weather maps show? And what is one effect that humans can have on weather? See you next time.